I'm recording this video because some of you have approached me during this question and discussion session and asked me about gradient descent, stochastic gradient descent and the exercise 5.1 in our second week's lab assignment and all of these things are kind of con connected. Um, I felt the urge to explain you how you can build your own gradient descent um, solver and how you can approach the problems in, in the easiest way possible. So this recording is just serving that purpose. I hope this will be helpful to you. So as a starter, I will just start a terminal you probably have something else but not the terminal again you can use anything you want visual studio or anything you prefer so i make this full screen and i start a file called gd.py i will try to make this a little bit larger the font size so that you see everything i'm writing on my screen um, I do the same here so I will record this file for now just to python3 gd.py of course it returns nothing because there's nothing inside this thing right as usual we need the imports import numpy snp and the other library you may want to import is says uh, which is very common in many cases you may recall uh, from these previous lab sessions, I was also doing this quite often. Um, so I removed it at one point, but for now, just for sake of you know the general flow in in Python programming, I will add this here. What this thing does is just shoots this starts this main function as the script starts. So I do exactly that, and I say hello here okay I got this hello on the right hand side as I print this so everything looks okay remember from our lab session I was also first generating a data set some sort of data that I can play around with and I will do this in the next lines but before I do that I want to also set these numbers so you see these numbers on the left hand side so I can do like x is equal to mp lin space from 0 to I don't know 1 and let's see let's say um, I have 20 different samples I can again do this print x and I can say x values and then I can say x and if I run this I got these x values as you can see here all is looking good next thing is I want to create some Y values that are corresponding to these X values whatever function I want to use will be decided in this line uh, so it should be like Y is equal to function that takes X and some parameters for now I will make it a second order function I will just you know give assign some numbers for one and I don't know ten I'm just making this up and then as I do this I also need a function and the function can go here um, it takes in the x values and some parameters and let's say my function returns y let's reconstruct y y is equal to parameters 0 times x plus parameter sorry x squared plus parameters 1 times x and parameters 2 it's all very simple what I just did is like something like y is equal to ax uh, square plus bx plus c this is a function you must have you, you you knew from before from many other courses that you had 
in the past. I hope this is also clear and I will just print this function again, the result of this function and we will see the y values format y. I think this is an extra. If I do that, I have these x values, I have these y values and things are looking good to me so far. So I just for, you know, like simplifying this entire script, I will just remove these prints because we don't really need them anymore. I just had this visual check, right? I don't want this to be printed every time I run this. So I think this is more clean. Now that I have this thing, next thing is I, uh, I will focus on writing this gradient descent algorithm in Python and I will walk you through each step that I'm taking to make this happen. You may have seen uh, already throughout the course notes that are hyper parameters in, in, in any, any model that you come across in the literature. And one of the most famous one is the learning rate. One of these things you want to decide. Um, and just for now, I will just keep it as 0 0.1. And if I write 1 e minus 1, this is equal to 0 0.1. Okay, guys. Another thing I want to pay attention is how many iteration steps, how many optimization steps I will take, right? You can either say like I want to take infinite number of iteration steps or you can say like I want to take iterations until I arrive at some solution. But for now, just for sake of simplicity, I will assign it to be a fixed number. Let's say iteration number is, I don't know, 200. Okay. So remember from this X and Y, I will try to find, I will try to estimate Neve parameters, Neve parameters that will help me describe this relationship between X and Y in the form of this polynomial here, second order polynomial. So let me delete this too. And I would say uh, my, my initial parameter or like my yeah, you can say like initial parameter our parameters is MP array. Let's start with 0 0.0.0.0. 0 .0 0 .0. So I'm guessing in the very start, I'm guessing that the parameters that I need is 0, 0, 0. And I will provide this to my gradient descent algorithm and it will give me an estimated parameters, okay? Gradient descent. Of course, we haven't yet compiled anything about gradient descent, so this is just a standalone function here, which is not uh, yet um, coded. So let's do that as well. Let's call this gradient descent. Maybe I can start from here. Definition, gradient, gradient descent. Okay, let's think about what this should have inside. I would say it should have some input data. I would also say, just me liking this notation quite much. Um, I try to you know align this in this order. You don't have to follow this uh, notation. It's just me. I'm doing this in this way. Um, so and then you can just do like you want some parameters to be supplied to this thing. Of course, you also want the ground truth, ground truth data, ground, ground uh, truth data to be supplied as well. Remember, for x, the output is y, right? So I should supply x as my input data, y as my ground truth data. Let's do that in the meantime too. Let's do that in the meantime too. 
if I click here, okay, if I click here and then say, like, my input data is X, and then my ground truth data is Y, and my parameters in the start is initial parameters. Next bit is to set learning rate, which is equal to learning rate. And I want to also provide iteration number. Iteration number is equal to iteration number. And if you go back here, maybe I can just make this a little bit smaller in size so that we don't consume much of the screen space. Okay. So I should also add this to my parameters here. There is this learning rate. Let me give a default value to this learning rate. It doesn't have to be always the same. We can change it by passing. This learning rate is equal to learning rate, okay? You can, but for the start, I can say like one E minus one. And then I can say something like iteration number is 10, let's say. So, of course, there will be other parameters that we will be adding to this. But for now, I think we have everything we need. Um, let's proceed and code a little bit more to find out what we are missing. Okay, this is here. Okay, so let's think a bit now. So we want this input data and this ground truth data help us estimate some parameters by taking some iterations and then using some learning rate. First, let's assign these iterations. And we can do that by for, I don't know, I in e I in range iteration number then that means I'm going to take steps and this will be the amount of the number of steps will be the amount of iteration number so if it's 200 if I pass 200 to this function it will loop for 200 times okay print I says ground truth data I have oh yeah I have a typo here I can just fix this real quick let me try running this one more time on the right hand side and if I do that remember I was taking steps 200 times and I was asking this algorithm to print I 200 times and it's doing that exactly I can see 200 steps it always, Python, I mean, in this case with the range, starts from zero. There is zero, one, two, three. That's why it ended up in 199. So it's, uh, that is the reason why. Next thing I want to do, I want to do, if you recall your lab work, it talks about the gradient, gradient. In the, in the gradient descent, you need to calculate the gradient. And given, in our case, we have three parameters, we will keep a gradient. We are searching for three different parameters. Like you're trying to find, uh, by looking into X and Y values, you're trying to find what is the parameter used to calculate this type of data. You're trying to find that and given it's defined by three different parameters, our gradient is also going to be looking very much similar to parameters. So it's like MP zeros <coughs> parameters shape zero. So, so 
if this is three numbers gradient is also a three number okay and you recall I haven't yet updated gradient it's all filled with zero and I need to zero the gradients at every iteration so that the previous iterations are not affecting my current solution in the wrong way so this is very much needed for you you see this in, in also you know in other machine learning um, uh, frameworks like torch for example uses this quite often you can see something like optimizer.0 grad and then it clears the gradients okay um, we have this gradient described here and it's all zeros filled with zeros next bit we want to do is to update our parameters right assume that we will calculate our gradient here calculate gradient and then next thing I want to do is to find out how I should be updating my parameters if you recall from this lab work and from the course notes and also in the description provided in the lectures lecture recordings you will find parameters is updated using the learning rate and the gradient okay so this is all you need to find out what the parameter should look like so we are getting really close then we not now need to find the gradient gradient descent calculates gradient on each point one by one okay and you can use accumulate all these all these great gradients that are calculated for each point and then figure out what your gradient should look like afterwards so in order for you to iterate over all your data you need another loop and that loop can come into in the shape of this one for j in the range input data shape zero so i'm just looping over input data let's say i'm taking the x from my input data from this index so i'm taking the j data from my input data and assigning it to be x okay hopefully this is sim simple and easy to follow the next bit is y is equal to ground fruit data j okay guys so i know what the y value should be in this case because i have x values and i have y values now okay guys and next thing is for me to figure out what is the gradient for this specific case right i need to find the gradient and then i need to accumulate that gradient with the existing gradient that i have okay so in order for me to figure out the gradient i need a gradient function gradient function we haven't yet we haven't yet uh, calculated that grad gradient function we haven't yet assigned it there's no code here that describes gradient function yet but let's say the gradient function should take in the x of course and it should take in the ground truth data the ground truth data so that i can compare my gradient in the right way and calculate it in the right way and i also need i also need the <coughs> i also need the parameters as one of these uh one of these um, values that i need access to and each time you calculate gradient here of course this is for one value you want to have a weighted some of these things <coughs> what you can do after you calculate accumulate this gradient you can you can say i have accumulated gradient therefore i can just take a weighted sum um, where the weights are all one so it's mean so i can do something like um, i can divide this gradient to input data shape zero hopefully this is clear 
and hopefully this is understandable and easy to follow. The missing bit here is the gradient function. We don't have the gradient function yet, so of course this solver should return, should return also the parameters once it's calculated. Just give me a second, I would like to start this from scratch, okay, yeah, much better. Now, the next bit I want to do is to have this gradient function defined. Gradient function, as we were speculating, it takes in x, y, and the parameters. Let's think about how we are approaching to this problem, right? We need a loss function to define if our current estimate is good or bad, right? We can use, we can use a loss function. In this case, um, a loss function we can use is something along the lines of, you know, a minus b, and then we take the second power. Of course, when you calculate your gradient, just a quick reminder, our function, our function, original function that we are trying to estimate is in the form of let's let's not confuse you guys and change this a to i don't know let's say uh, let's say this is y and let's say this is my current solution which is solution okay and the function the form of my function which gives me the solution you can also say solution is equal to is equal to a x square bx plus c now we have a second order polynomial that represents our estimates our solution because we have estimated the parameters of a b c which are inside these parameters so this parameters has three different values it's a b and c and using that parameters, I can calculate, using x also, I can calculate the current solution. So entire formulation then looks like y minus ax square plus bx plus c. And then I take another square here. This is the entire problem entire problem that I'm dealing with right so the next bit is to find the gradient remember I find gradient for each parameter I need to find the gradient for a I need to find the gradient for B I need to find the gradient for C so that means I can follow this chain rule that you may have learned in the past um, it's just telling me that I can use I can use partial derivatives and multiply them and then I will get an estimated derivative let's say um, so in this in this case if I take the derivative of this entire function with respect to a let's say gradient with respect to a is as follows it's I write the entire function as is just just to you know just to manipulate this little bit better and then write it in the right way so this square this square comes out of this parenthesis right you can recall from your course from your previous courses how you take the derivative and so on so um, this is two here we just took it out of the parenthesis but remember we are taking with respect to a so there should also be a minus here minus sign here so because this is minus here and then you 
take with respect to a if you take the derivative with respect to a here this is zero derivative is zero this is zero but you have x square here so i can just say x square okay guys now let me clone this line and let's take the derivative with respect to b c so everything stays the same for b and c but as you can tell b is bx right so you don't need the x square you need the x in this case you get this one out of this thing and then in the case of c you don't need the other x's because there are no x here so it's just this we just we just learned how we can take how we can take the derivative derivative of our problem described with an l2 loss function because we have some function we want to estimate and then we try to see using that function we try to see how good or how bad our, our current solution is and this loss function the l2 loss function is doing exactly that it just gives us an idea about if our solution is good or bad and this entire type of you know loss function and the solution that we are trying to identify in the form of this function is giving us this specific problem and what I just did is just to take the derivatives with respect to each parameters so I, I saw that I can calculate the gradients okay so I can say then gradient gradient is equal to mp array and then the first line is for the first parameter so I should exactly calculate this thing here so I can say minus 2 times x second power and then times the solution which is y the ground truth and then I need I need to uh, subtract that from the solution okay right because this entire function is my solution my current solution for the problem but we don't we don't we didn't yet calculate the solution right so we should go back to here we can say solution is equal to parameters or or without saying parameters you can also say you can also say maybe you can also pass function as one parameter here and then you can say function is equal to x and parameters because remember what function does if you pass x and if you pass parameters it gives you some y right and this is my solution this is what i'm after so i pass this as a, as one of these variables uh, that are input to this function and i should probably do this also in here to avoid any errors in the future function parameter and I should also pass this as an argument right I need to pass the function and I also need to pass the gradient function if we go back to our main here to the very beginning I think I should also be passing it here then I have this function equal to function and then gradient function is equal to gradient function So we have supplied everything to our gradient descent function and this gradient function takes in everything it needs to calculate the gradients. So let's add another line here. Calculate the gradient for this other parameter which is x times y times solution. I just replicated this specific line in the form of a code and the next bit I want to do is minus 2 
x, uh, I don't need x, I need y minus solution. I think we just calculated the gradients. Okay, so we just calculated the gradients. Um, we just calculated the gradients. So we need to see, we need to see if our gradients are leading to a good parameter estimation or a bad one. For now, I will just delete these lines because we don't need these anymore. We just convert it into a piece of code in the following lines. So this is much shorter this way. Um, of course, I need to return the parameters after I update them with enough number of iterations. That was a bug. Now we fix that one too. Next thing we want to make sure is to find out what our current parameters are and I can print that at each iteration I can do this iteration iteration number is this and then I can say parameters parameters are this and I can say format and then I can say my iteration number is I and then my parameters are parameters so Hopefully this is all. Let me have a quick visual check. Uh, let's repeat what we have just done. We have defined some, some data. We defined our learning rate, iteration number, initial parameters for our estimates. So this is the starting point of our search using gradient descent. We have provided the input data, ground truth data function to find out if our, our existing parameter or existing parameter estimates are doing a good or a bad job. This is useful for that thing. And then we have this gradient function, which helps us to pose the entire problem, including the loss function in the form of a gradient. And this is done in between line 25 to 32. And I have these parameters, initial parameters provided, learning rate provided, iteration number provided. Okay, let's see what we do in the gradient descent. We have a bunch of iterations here given with some iteration number. If it's 10, it's 10. If it's 100, it's 100. Let's see what we have provided originally. This is 200. That means this, this loop will go for 200 steps. And at each step, we clear the gradients. We print the outcome of that uh, specific step. And we update, we update our estimate, the parameter estimate. Remember, it starts with 0, 0, 0. After this first step, for example, it will turn into something else. And remember how I backpropagated this, like using this division here. The reason is like I have, I calculated this gradient on a, each and every one of these samples I have. And I'm trying to see... I'm trying to add their contribution one by one. And as I do this, it will lead up to a large number, right? To avoid that large number, to have a mean, you know, projection, let's say you need this kind of division. And then you get this, of course, um, you need to also calculate all of these, you know, gradients for each and every one of these, each and every one of these, you know, values that you have and this is already being calculated here. Loss function is included. We have seen this, we know how this works, we talked about this and so on. If we are lucky after this, most of the times things doesn't work in the very first step. Um, let's see, it does something, okay, it does something, but what does it do? Let's, let's try to understand. Uh, remember we were trying to get four 1, 10, this is the original value we used. According to this gradient descent implementation, with the given learning rate and 200 steps, you get the estimates of 
2, 3, and 9, 9.6. I think this is slightly off, right? We need either more iteration numbers or more aggressive learning. You can be more aggressive in learning or in estimation by increasing this learning rate. Let's increase this a little bit just to see the effect of this thing. It didn't change much. So I would say maybe I need much more steps than this. If I have 1000 steps rather than 200 steps. Let's see what this changes. I have these parameters 3.68, 1.3 and almost 10 right it's getting closer but this is still not good and I, there is also no mechanism telling me if i'm doing a good job or a bad job in this estimation so i need to also calculate a general loss and print that the way i can do this is i can go back to this gradient descent function i can define something like i don't know loss loss is equal to Let's think a bit how we calculate loss. So we first need the ground truth data. Ground truth data, okay? We also need to provide uh, the input data and our current parameters to calculate the corresponding you know, values we generate using the, using the current estimated parameters. So I can say function, which represents the function that I'm after, which takes in also x and then the parameters. This is my current solutions result, right? With the current parameters. And then if I want this to be like L2, then I should also do this. I should also take the second power. Now I have calculated the loss. Maybe I can just add this to in, in my print. I can do this loss here and then comma and then I have loss I suspect if I do this right away like this this is not a good because ground truth data has many values and this will spit out many different values I don't want to see many values I just want to get a sense of how is this doing in general so maybe instead of you know showing you know per data losses I should just take the mean value of this thing or sum of this thing and just look at that right let's take the sum of that um, all these errors all these losses that we calculate okay so if I run this things will be looking very much crowded here if I print this yeah it's, this is hard to read let me let me go back to this print in line 22 and let me do this 0 0.4 f which suggest which, te which tells that um i don't i don't need it in here it's, it, this is an integer so i can do like 0 0.4 f here that means like after this 238 i will have four digits here and i won't be seeing these these other bits they will be just rounded and if I look into the parameters, if I look into the parameters, I can also do the same thing for parameters. But since this is Pythonic array, sorry, not NumPy array, maybe it's a better idea to round it using NumPy, NumPy definitions. I can do np dot round parameters, comma. Let's say two is enough, which means I don't need this all these other digits after the first two digits okay let's run this and let's see if this looks more tidy okay yeah this this looks apparently much more tidy and if you go back to our original parameters you can see that this is 4 1 10 and we get 3.68 1.33 and 9.94 this is still not good i mean this is still not perfect you can see that there is some loss here so maybe we should take maybe we should take more steps no loss increased what else can we try um what if i be try to learn more aggressively what if i have a larger learning rate let's see let's experiment okay this suggests that this is doing its job 
So we have 4, 1, 10. But what bothers me is this loss here. The loss should have given me, you know, something that is small, that is zero. And why it's not giving me something zero? It's giving me 244. Okay, let's, oh, I think I know. I think I know. Let's go back to way I calculated the loss. I can just go back to here and then I say input data not x because remember x is just one data we are not after one data we are trying to evaluate this for the entire input data and the ground truth data if i do this if i save this and if i go back to here and play this one more time on the right hand side there you go my loss is zero and the parameters that i'm estimating out of this estimation process using gradient descent is four 1, 10. And let's see, 4, 1, 10. But we should always ask ourselves, we implemented this, but does it work for other cases? Is this something reliable? Basically, that's the question, right? Let's, let's, let's try things. Let's say if I make this 0, so my initial function is built, initial data is built using 4, 1, 0. Let's see if my estimation gradient descent would do anything useful i mean yeah this is good after 200 steps i think it's getting to, to the right uh, place let's keep it more simple zero one zero zero one zero there you go we have the parameters already figured out estimated here um let's see what if i give really really large numbers hundred one zero i'm just making this up and then parameters let's look into here this is 9.9 9.9 but it's uh times 10 here which is um which is 100 right so we also have like one here which is one here also and then we have minus one times 10 to the power of minus two which is 0 0.001 and this is a very small number as well, which is almost like zero, but it's not perfectly zero. Okay, okay. So it, I got the impression that this is working. I got the impression that this is working. I just set it to 2, 1, 10 to see if this also works. I mean, this is also good. It's also working. Let's also play this with a little bit more. What if I change the initial estimate? What if I like make this something like 10, 10? Would it still do the job? It looks like it can. It looks like it can. So I try to give you guys some ideas about how to approach this. Um, other questions that you ask me. One of you asked me about like how do I resolve? How do I resolve the um, lasso equation uh, lasso regression um, in the same form using this gradient descent you should you can also do this uh, instead of using this function in your estimations you will need to be defining a new function here that goes well with your regression remember it was a vector vector multiplication you need to do that in the first place and having that multiplication in the routine if you go back to your uh, lab 5.1 um, assignment sheet, you'll also find that the loss function is also defined there. Remember how I framed this gradient function here? You should just go through the same exercise, very same exercise. You just, you know, write down the loss. You just write down the function that you use and then embed them inside each other and see when you take the derivative with respect to one parameter what is left you should ask yourself this specific question okay i hope this was useful for some of you guys um, and i hope this give you some sort of formation on how to approach these problems overall i can also say that the gradient descent is a very powerful uh, way to you know estimate and optimize things i also use it on daily basis on my research so it's 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 a very common tool all these you know deep learning architectures 
they are being optimized mostly by using stochastic gradient descent, all these convolutional networks basically they are they are using SGD stochastic gradient descent. In some cases they use gradient descent depending on their problem, depending on the way they want to approach the problem. And having an understanding about how to implement gradient descent is very helpful because now you have access to how things work. It's like knowing, you know, what your car does when you when you just turn turn on the you know the, the key and start the engine and so on. Okay guys, uh, I hope this is useful. I hope you liked it. If you have any other questions, as always, please use the question and discussion section on Moodle and I'll be happy to answer your questions. I look forward to your uh, questions. Thank you.